This video is all about drawing female hips. I did a video about drawing female torsos about a year ago, but I wanted to take a little bit more time to really delve into hip construction and show you some of the things that I've been learning lately. Some of what I've included here is from Mikey Mega Mega, who has a YouTube channel. It's phenomenal. And I'll put a link to his channel in the description below. Please check it out. He has a lot of incredibly useful content. I'm David Finch. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe and share with your friends. If you want high resolution images of the drawings in this video for your reference, check out the description below and there's a link to my Gumroad where you can get them all for free. All right, we're gonna go ahead and start with a construction drawing of the hips from the front. And I'm starting with the center line down the center of the torso, and then a bit of a bowl shape. It's an upside down bowl shape for the top of the hips. That would be the crest of the pelvic bone. Just below that, I have a small triangle for the crotch area. And then from the top of the bowl shape, I'm actually going inward for the stomach, and it comes back out where the rib cage hits. And just about halfway down between the ribs and the top of the hip sits the belly button along the center line. I've extended the triangle of the crotch up through the top of the hips and then darkened in the hips themselves just to differentiate them. From here, I'm going to go ahead and draw one leg and then the other leg. And you'll notice that the leg starts at the bottom of that bowl shape. I've drawn two little dots there just to give you an idea of where it starts. And it indents and then comes out for the leg itself. Now from the side, I'm drawing my bowl shape. I've actually drawn the center line really along the front and I'm drawing another line along the back. And here's my rib cage shape. I've drawn a dot for my hip bone. And here's the leg extending down below and the buttocks rests along the back and gives the back of the leg shape. In this next example, we're going to draw the hips from the back. I'm drawing my bowl shape again. We're looking slightly up at it, so I've darkened the bottom. I'm going inward again for the stomach area. This is the back, but it's the same shape and it extends outward again for the rib cage. From here, I'm drawing the rear of the crotch area as a small triangle. And this time I'm drawing the shape of the buttocks on the back before I attach the legs. And my legs extend from the top of the buttocks. On the inside of the leg, it comes out slightly and then it tapers down. And on the outside of the leg, it tapers in toward the hip bone and then comes back out and then tapers down toward the knee. Here's just a really quick drawing to simplify the buttocks from behind. So I've got two shapes just about like this and it's almost like a butterfly, basically. And so I'm drawing a hip bone on either side and then the actual shape of the hip and the legs below. The legs indent toward the hip bone and then come back out toward the crest of the hip and the inside of the legs indent slightly as they come up toward the buttocks. Next, I wanted to show a bit more of a traditional drawing of a hip, more in the style of an Andrew Loomis. And so I've got basically an underwear shape and then my hips are coming out and I've drawn those as two balls. And now I'm drawing the legs extending out from that. And you can see how the buttocks rests on top of that. And it basically comes to the same shape. I like this kind of a diagram, but I'm finding lately I really, really like using a bowl shape. I find it much more useful and volumetric when I'm drawing hips. So now that we have some basics down, I wanted to go ahead and start to draw some hips from a variety of different angles. And we can show how we can move those angles in space in order to draw a variety of different poses. So I'm looking at the hips here from the side, about a three quarter angle. I'm slightly looking up and you can see my bowl shape extending up into the stomach. I've got my crotch between. I've drawn circles for my hips along either side of that bowl shape. And I've extended up the triangles to the side of the hips and I'm drawing the leg extending back. And there's the top of the leg. My leg actually indents toward the hip bone and you can see the buttocks behind. The other leg, and it's very important to note that it actually extends out from the body at the level of the hip bone. And so you can see that I'm at the bottom of that bowl. So the leg from that angle comes from a lower place than it's very commonly drawn. And working this way makes it really easy for you to be able to place it properly every time. And I'm just drawing an arrow here to show exactly where that leg extends out below the bowl shape above. So here we're looking at the back. I'm looking up at the bowl slightly, the same shape every time. I've got my crotch area defined below. Now I'm drawing the top of the leg. I want the leg to be 
going into the page so you can see basically it's a tube and I'm making sure to draw that as a tube in space and I'm drawing the buttocks over top just like that and the buttock stretches and curves around when you bend the leg and then contracts when you straighten the leg so you end up with a much longer muscle with a bent leg than with a straightened leg so the next angle we're going to draw from the side slightly looking at the back and I've got my bowl shape and my hip bone placed and now I'm drawing a tube for my leg and the back of the crotch area and you can see even without a buttocks drawn in it really is almost just implied and now the next leg because of the angle of my bowl for the hips sits lower and the hip is just drawn at the other side of that bowl so the other leg sits lower along the front leg and is pretty easy to place i'm just drawing in the top of my tubes for my legs and just darkening it in just to make it a little bit more clear so i wanted to go ahead and draw the same drawing again and just stick with some very very basic kind of blocked in shape. So I've got my bull shape for the hips. You can see the bottom of it, I've darkened it in. And now I've got the tubes for my legs and I'm drawing the top of the tube as dark. And then the legs get slightly wider and then taper down toward the hips. And the buttocks just finishes out that form. It's a very, very simple form. And there's really not a lot of structure that I'm drawing underneath there, but I'm finding it really isn't all that necessary and so I wanted to show you just a quick diagram. Here is my hip bowl from the side, and here's my leg below, a very, very simple drawing of it. And you can see that there's just a seam where it closes together, and that's a straightened leg. And here is my hip bone, the same shape again, and I've got my leg bent, and you can see just how much of a bend that gets. It's, it's essentially a hinge, and the buttocks just rounds around the shape of that hinge. It makes it very, very easy to draw. And it's really ignoring a lot of mechanics that go on in the body in order to achieve that. But just for ease of drawing, I find it really, really volumetric and effective. So here we're looking at the hip bowl again. We're looking at the top of it just slightly. And I'm drawing in my crotch below and extending out the triangle for the sides of the hips. And now I want the legs to come out toward me. This is a, a sitting pose. And so I've got one leg drawn in and then the other leg drawn in and they're attaching to the front of my hips. And you can see that the leg starts much wider at the hip and is much narrower at the knee and reaches its widest point just about halfway down. Now this next example, we're looking essentially from the front again. This is just about a three quarter angle, maybe a little bit more toward the front. And I've got my bowl, my upside down bowl for the hips, my stomach drawn through the front of it. I'm kind of changing the angle of my upper body a little bit. I want it to have a bend from the hips themselves. Now I'm drawing in my actual hip shape finishing out a triangle along the front. I'm gonna draw my right leg coming out toward us, bent at about a 45 degree angle. And then behind that, you can see the shape of the buttocks finishing out that form very, very simply. Again, it's almost implied even without drawing that shape in there. And the other leg is just extended out behind it. So this next one is a bit of a tougher angle. What I wanna do is draw the legs bent pretty high and coming toward us and so we can see the bottom of the hip bone i'm drawing through the the whole crotch area below it and it's giving me something that's much more like the underwear shape that i was using before and i'm going to draw a circle for the base of my leg and then a smaller circle for the knee and you can see it gets a little wider a little wider and that gives me my leg in space here and now my next leg is bent even a little bit further i'm drawing my leg out from that that circle just as a tube and then finishing out the bottom the buttocks below i'm going to draw a shape for my knee another kind of a circular shape it's a bit of a football shape for my calf and finish a foot and i'm going to draw the other leg through just to make this angle a little bit more clear this can be an angle that can be very difficult to draw and you can see that just simplifying it down into simple tubes make it makes it very easy and i'm just going to go ahead and erase a little bit just to make it a little bit more clear with so many lines drawn through it can be a little confusing as to what you're looking at angles like this can be a little bit more difficult to draw just getting used to drawing volumetric shapes like tubes in space on command at any angle and it's a very important skill to learn 
So now we're looking down at the hips and we're looking at a figure from behind. So I've got the triangle shape for the crotch. That's the rear of the crotch there. I'm drawing in the circle of my, the top of my tube for my leg coming out below. And it's hinging from the front of that hip bowl. And now I'm drawing the other leg beside it. And you really don't see the other leg. It's actually bent in front of the, the front leg. And so we'll see the bottom of the leg extend out. But I'm drawing that top of the leg there. And I didn't draw through, but I'm making sure that it joins up to where the top of that or the bottom of that hip bowl shape would be on the other side. This next one is really kind of covering some of the same ground. I'm drawing in the top of my hip bowl. I'm drawing it in dark just to kind of differentiate it. You can see the line of my stomach and then I'm going in toward the belly button and then back out toward my rib cage above. There's the bottom of the bowl here. The crotch connects to the center line, defining in the front of my hips and then drawing in the tube for my lower leg. I'm making sure to indent it along the hip bone. And then behind that, you can actually see some of the buttocks. And so I've just drawn a little bit just behind the hip bone there. And now I've got the other leg extending out toward us and I'm drawing in just a major muscle that extends up through the top of the hip. And notice again that the front of the leg starts at the bottom of that hip bone from this angle also. And it makes it very, very easy to get that placement right. Finding in the sides of my stomach, the obliques, the bottom of the rib cage, and just a little bit more detail. This next one is gonna be directly from the side and the leg is gonna be bent upwards. And so I've drawn in the shape for my stomach and then the shape for my back, a line around horizontally for where my belly button would go. And you can see, I'm just drawing a quick diagram of the line of the stomach indenting toward the belly button and then coming back out and indenting again along the crotch. And so I'm drawing a line along the side of the body that shows kind of the, the shape of that bowl where it connects to the hip. I've hinged my leg out from the front of the hip. And so while the hip is a very, very important landmark, I'm really not using it when I'm bending the leg because I'm hinging that leg out so far from my hip bowl and just connecting it with a rounded shape for the buttocks. But it's very, very important, especially when you're drawing the side of the leg because that's where the leg indents and gets a lot of its shape. Now the other leg is extending from the front of the other side of the hip bowl and you really don't see the buttocks because the leg is straight and it's not visible behind the buttocks in the front. Next, I wanted to draw two examples. This is an example of a female hip from behind. You see the bottom of the bowl and just being able to angle that bowl in space is really the essential skill that you need to be able to draw all of these as shapes. And so I've got it basically established. I've got the center line, the lines for my hips. I've got my leg extended forward, hinging from the front of my hip bowl and I'm drawing in the rounded shape of the crotch there and then just connecting it for the buttocks. And you can see it finishes that leg very quickly and easily. And now my other leg is gonna be more straight. And so I'm drawing the top of that shape. You can see a bit of the top of that cylinder and then just connecting the buttocks in that one too. And you can see it very quickly and easily finishes out almost by itself. And next I'm gonna draw basically the same angle and I'm gonna draw a set of male hips just to show you the difference. And the biggest difference that I'm drawing right now, I would say is the connection above the bowl of my hips into the stomach. And I'm just receding in much less. The stomach is much wider in relation to the hips. And so now I'm drawing my leg tube bent and then my straightened leg tube. The leg gets wider and then gets more narrow just slightly and then quite a bit more narrow toward the knee and I'm gonna connect in my buttocks. I'm just a little bit more angular with it, but it really is generally the same shape. It's just a difference in proportion. Now this next example, I wanted to go ahead and just draw both legs completely straight. I'm looking at about a 45 degree angle. Got my hip bowl shape, my center line, and then indenting for the stomach, coming back out for the rib cage. And now I'm gonna draw in my crotch just below along the center line, connect in my hips, and then draw in my hip bone, 
and then drawing in my leg from below. And you can see it indents along the hip bone, gets a little wider and then tapers toward the knee. And on the inside, it starts at the bottom of the crotch. And I've also defined in my major long muscle that extends from the top of the hip bone down toward the inside of the knee. And now my other leg is really the same. There's an indent and I'm drawing in a shape of the buttocks behind my hip bone. It's fairly small from that angle. So now I want to go ahead and draw some more completed drawings of hips. These are going to be very, very simple though. You really need very little when you're drawing female anatomy to get the point across. You don't want to draw a lot of musculature and overburden your figure with detail. And so I'm drawing one of the poses that I drew earlier on. I've got all my shapes kind of coming in. I'm using the same rules that I did before. And I'm just making sure to be lighter with it because I know I'm going to really want to erase this and get a tighter drawing. So generally speaking, I like to draw my layouts pretty lightly so they're just easier to erase. So I basically got everything kind of defined in there and I'm going to go ahead and erase this down so I can see what I have. And now I'm just going to go and start to draw in my shapes. So I'm going to start drawing the contour line around and I'm making sure that forms that are in front are drawn as in front and forms that are behind are pushed back just by overlapping the line slightly and just creating those simple overlaps really gives your figure a lot of depth with very, very little detail. I've drawn just a bit of a detail there for the buttocks over the hip bone. Uh, it's really not necessary and you, you really run a risk of drawing detail that can be distracting on a female figure. And the one last thing that I wanna do is connect the major muscle that runs along the front of the leg down to the bottom of the knee to my hip bone, but I don't wanna draw that whole line. I just wanna use it to define some shape. So I'm drawing the whole thing in just to make sure that I've got it lined up, erasing it out, and then just drawing in the lower portion of it. Now we're drawing some hips from behind. I've got my bowl for my hips, the back of the crotch there, my leg bent forward. So I'm drawing that tube through. My other leg is straightened out. And so I'm just gonna connect in the buttocks really quickly. You can see how fast it is to draw these kinds of forms in. And it makes it really convenient to make consistent drawings that really work from any angle without taking a lot of time drawing overly complicated forms. And so I'm gonna go ahead again and start drawing in my contour. Things that are in front, I'm making sure to cross over. I'm also making sure that I've essentially got my lighting coming from the top. I'm really not lighting this, but I am drawing slightly thicker lines away from the light. So basically on the underside of forms and thinner lines up toward the light. So on the upper curves of forms, like the top of the leg that's bent. And that's really all there is to it. Very, very simple. Just drawing the contours and some connection points. Very similar actually to drawing stone where I've got cracks and I don't want to draw the entire crack. What I really want to do is define where the cracks intersect and go just a little bit thicker there and shore those up. It really sells realistic looking cracks in detail without overloading it, which I tend to do anyway, but. And so now I'm drawing my seated pose again and just sketching that in. I've got my bowl shape. I've got my tubes for the legs. They're shaped so they start wider, get narrower toward the knees and are widest just below the hip. making sure to define in my muscle along the inside of the knee. I got a little bit wide with the knee there, so I'm just correcting that, drawing the ball in, and then just kind of extending the lower leg down just for context. And then out toward the bottom of the rib cage. And you can see that I've got a clearly defined hip and it indents toward the hip bone at the bottom of that pole, and then comes back out for the top of the leg. And so now really the same thing again, just slightly darker on the undersides and just defining in those forms. I'm gonna draw just a little bit of detail for that hip, just enough to indicate it, but not enough that it looks distracting. Something I really like to avoid is drawing lines for muscles. So long lines that define a muscle, I find can really look distracting and look drawn. And you really wanna be drawing almost like ambient inclusion. So you just draw the connection points. And so you can see where I've gotten thicker with my line and that's at the connection from the stomach to the rib cage, from the bottom of the hip toward the bending leg in those places. So one last example, we're looking at the hips directly from behind. Here's my bowl of the hip, looking up at it. 
I've got the center of the back drawn in and I'm going to go ahead and draw one leg directly downward. It's it angles in and you can see how it you can see how it gets wider just below the hip and then tapers down. And the other leg is angled away from us and the knee is slightly bent. So what I've got here is I've got the figure's weight rested on the left leg. And so the hip on that side is raised quite a bit. And the other leg that is really not carrying that much weight, maybe 10%, 20% of the weight is dropped and relaxed. And so I'm just going ahead again, drawing the bottom of the buttocks, legs going in. That's a bit of a connection point there. So I'm going a little bit heavier and just really drawing the outlines. There's very little that I'm actually putting in there. And so that's going to be it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you very, very soon for Monday Night Draw. We'll be coming back, I want to say September 6th, basically the Sunday of around September 6th. So whatever Sunday that is, we'll be coming back with Monday Night Draw with Meredith and Dave, and we will see you then, Monday nights at 8 o'clock. All right. Thank you so much for watching.